I'm Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist. I'm working with files that use animation effects inside of Adobe Captivate. I'll also be working with Adobe eLearning Suite, specifically with Adobe Photoshop, CS5, and Photoshop round tripping in this particular demonstration. First, let's take a look at what we have here in this file. As you can see on this main screen, we see the display of the animation effects. We'll just go through and take a look at the first page of the project. Move this into position, and then we'll start. The reason that a hot air balloon rises is that the air inside the balloon is warmer than the air outside. The height of the balloon is controlled by adding or releasing hot air. To add air, gas kept in tanks in the basket is heated and the resulting hot air is expelled into the open chamber of the balloon. To remove hot air, a flap on the top is opened by the pilot in the basket below. This allows cooler air to fill the balloon and causes it to sink lower. All right, so with that, how are those animation effects created and what kinds of tools can we use to bring these graphics in? You can see over here on the right hand side in the library, I've got images that, but then below the images you can see layerballoon.psd. This is a slightly different image. Here's a, a sync button that will allow me to sync that up with my Photoshop original. I'm just going to right click on that layer balloon PSD and then choose to edit the PSD source file. When I do that you see that Photoshop opens and inside of Photoshop I'm actually able to see that this is a series of layers inside of my Photoshop document. Each of those layers contains one of these little arrow icons and you, you can see that these are going to be the ones that spin and these are the ones that appear above and below. Now let's just say for argument's sake that I wanted to change the hot air element so that the hot air element was a little more uh, translucent. So all I'd have to do is select that layer. I can double click it here to bring up the uh, editor for that and then with that editor up and in place I can then say okay well I want to make the blend over all the opacity overall go down just a bit. So I'll make that a little uh, more transparent okay and then I'll do the same thing with the release air valve just bring that down a little bit. So I'll make that small modification inside of Photoshop and then once I've done all I have to do uh, is just choose File Save. Uh, when I choose File Save then I can go back immediately to Captivate. You can see Captivate updates the PSD source file and then automatically those pieces have become translucent here inside of Captivate. Now let's take a look at what's happening in terms of the animation itself. The animation actually happens here on the Effects property inspector panel right if you can't see it in your version of captivate just go to window and then choose effects when you choose window and effects it'll open up in a property inspector now if i select any element for example these spinning elements i can see that what i've done here is put a rotate filter on it let me just remove that and then we'll see what it looks like to start from the beginning so here's my basic piece of graphic it came out of my library and i put it over here uh, into the space that I needed it. I go down here to the FX button, I click on it, and then from the FX button I will choose from the available uh, filters. You can see here that in the emphasis filters there is one called Rotate, and Rotate looks like a good solution for me. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Rotate. Now when it goes in initially it's a little bit shorter than I want. I want it to actually keep spinning uh, around and around uh, over and over again. Okay, so I'm going to choose rotate like this. I'm going to put it into that location. I'm going to pull it out so that it's the full length. Now, this is a timeline based animation, so I just leave this setting on the default, which is for a timeline based animation. If I had uh, animations that were triggered by button interactions, that sort of thing, then a new option would appear in this drop down menu that would allow me to choose which button or which. Uh, interactive was actually going to trigger that animation. But for now we're going to go with just a, a basic simple approach. Now here I can live preview animation effects by clicking this button and that will allow me to see what those animation effects actually will look like in my finished content. Okay? So that's really um, all there is to that in terms of adding those animation effects. I do have another kind of animation effect 
Um, let me just show you that briefly as well. So there's another kind of animation approach. I'm going to go back here to the effects tab, turn off that live preview. You noticed probably that one of these actually has a secondary animation. So I use the rotate on one of these, but when the cold air fills the balloon, I want to show that the, the balloon interior is actually getting colder and colder. So I use the tint from filter. Now the tint from to filter is available here from the FX panel as well. And what I did is I had it wait until a per certain point in the animation about seven and a quarter seconds in. And then I changed these properties so that initially it would be a red color, but then it would be a blue color. It would slowly tint from one to the other. And I wanted to set that final tint tone to 50% so that I would get kind of a purpley overall tone to this uh, piece as it goes. So if we go back then and look at the project, you'll see that in the end our outcome is as we expect. The reason that a hot air balloon rises is that the air inside the balloon is warmer than the air outside. The height of the balloon is controlled by adding or releasing hot air. To add air, gas kept in tanks in the basket is heated and the resulting hot air is expelled into the open chamber of the balloon. To remove hot air, a flap on the top is opened by the pilot in the basket below. This allows cooler air to fill the balloon and causes it to sink lower. And you can see that nice tinting effect. You may have noticed one more animated effect, which was the balloon rising up and then lowering in coordination with my description of those things. That's really just a matter of swapping those images. So for that I use a timeline based animation. We'll go here to the timeline to take a look at that. And as we look at the timeline we can see all of the elements that are presented. So sometimes these are visible and sometimes they're not. Well how does that happen? Well the way that it happens is that over time this playback head represents time and if I drag the playback head I'll even hear the reason my voice that a hot recording. air the hot air balloon run rises is that air inside the balloon you is can see here we're at about three seconds into the animation as the we get to a little is more is warm, right is we start warm, to see that the swirling hot will begin to appear right is and that's because the I have swirling hot set up to fade in automatically if we look in the properties inspector we'll see that that is the transition fade in and out Okay, so the fade in is handled by Captivate's transition, and then it appears for this amount of time between three and a half seconds and about eight and a half seconds. The same thing is happening with those images that we described. So we can see that uh, over here in the graphics, uh, there are actually images of the balloon high, right? and that the balloon high image appears at about 16 and a half seconds in and because the balloon high image is on top of the other balloon image I can leave the other balloon image visible the entire time so you can see balloon low is actually displayed the entire time it's just covered by balloon high for the time period where I want to describe the balloon flying up and then I remove the balloon that's flying up and we we're again able to see the lower or closer camera angle balloon shot. So uh, that gives us a sense that the balloon is going up and then the balloon is coming down. It's a nice way to explain uh, that core content. I hope you enjoyed this example of animation in Captivate. I'm Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist.